home, so they had to stay with the younger brother or sister, and that's why they leave to school, but they don't have the note. I mean, we, we, I mean, I know it sounds very individual, but it, it truly is. I mean, we're in that office in the morning, I mean, you see me when you drive, you know, out, out back, and we come in, and, you know, we deal with those for a few minutes. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like there's, you know, lines out the door and it's this big, but they do, the occur occurrences do come up where we have to, you know, make a judgment, and I, I think we have demonstrated a pretty good record with that. But I believe me, I understand where you're coming from. I do get it. <laughs> you know, I respect where you're at, and I'd be happy to, you know, continue to look at it. John, we, we had this conversation about, and we had Carolyn in too, because she's sometimes yes. the person who is yeah. right on the front desk. Um, in that, it, it seems that Jerry's concern, one of them, is that last yeah. penalty, so to speak, mm -hmm. the tardy to school or prohibited from practices or extracurricular activities on that day, mm -hmm. except in the case of an extenuating circumstance as determined by a school administrator. Would, is there a way to link that last piece with the chronic tardiness issue and the additional disciplinary action? Or do you see it as something that should happen every time there's unexcused, that's beyond the extenuating circumstance? Is there a way, if it's, if it's something that is so far beyond the extenuating circumstance, can you clarify that to really point that out? I think I, I hear you, David. I, I mean, mean, it's like it's like it's repeating again in that last except. There's another exception. There's always an exception. Yeah, the last exception actually seems to be saying except that which the unexcused absence, which has already been determined to be unexcused, now there's a uh, an extenuating circumstance for that. It. You know what I'm saying? So you've already been determined to be unexcused, which means there were no un extenuating circumstances in the first place. But now, as far as the athletics are concerned, there's a determination whether or not your unexcused absence right. should be some type of so extenuating way circumstance. Well, maybe, let, look, so. maybe I could give you something to think about. Is you know, I, when I if you, we look at the the dismissal section, not that I want to get off the tidy section, but if you look at the dismissal section, I did I did come up with something that I'm hoping you like, and I wonder if it might be something to think about for applying to tardies, where a percentage of the school day must be attended. And maybe that is something that we could weave into um, the tardies. That, you know, what I what I don't think you would want in the tardies is to say, but there, you know, everybody gets one freebie, so to speak, for lack of a better word, because that student that comes in at 150, you know, and serves place 10 minutes, uh, attends 10 minutes of school. I mean, you don't want that to become something that's practiced. But but maybe there's something where if the student needs to have attended a percentage of the day or you know some which is what i've written in for the dismissal piece here uh, something to think about you can make that a condition of it. Sure, okay. i just want to express again my issue is with it is i agree with cliff and everybody else 100 percent we need to instill uh you know <coughs> timeliness good habits getting right. to where you're supposed to be but i just see the contradiction in saying but you can be late <coughs> up to 15 minutes six times a year i i think that i have a problem with that part only because I, I we say so Right, I don't think we should be encouraging that. So that's one. The second thing is, how many parental complaints have you gotten when a kid has been told, a student has been told, you can't participate in your after-school activity? And third, is a kid told that when they come in? How does the kid know? Or if the kid comes in 20 minutes late and no one says anything to them, does the kid just go off to their baseball practice or football no. game? or? Well, how are they informed? What's the, the, the process? The, Mrs. We email the daily attendance to all of the teachers and all of the coaches, mm -hmm. even the coaches that don't teach in the system. Mm -hmm. We email that three or four times a day. Okay. So the coaches get an email, and they're instructed on what they need. They need to check that. Um, and is the know. student told too? The students told. Yes. Okay. I mean, when they come into the office. Right. And I, you know, I think she, Carolyn, actually referenced it when, when right. David and I met with her that she goes through a process of educating in the beginning of the year. <coughs> You know, this is what happens the next time, or you know, do you understand what it means? Seven point. You know, she goes through and actually has conversations with kids for their first time, so that they know down the road. And I, I you know, to your original question, I can't recall. I don't recall the last time I got a call, or am aware of a call from a parent. Now, it could be that you know, Mrs. Lucci's getting a call and is resolving it, and it just doesn't get to me. You know, Mr. Rosemerick may get the call if she can't work with the parent to satisfy them. But I, I can't remember the last time that was an issue in the office. But I don't want to say that it never happens. I just, it's rare. Well, the reason I ask is that is I, I feel comfortable with you 
as the head of the administrative staff at, at the building that this policy will be enforced with common sense. So that's why I asked that question, because I, fi I figured that was the answer. So I, I really, Mr. Webb, I can't really remember the last time it was an issue. I mean, it, I'm sure there's one, you know, there may be somebody sitting at home watching TV right now and saying, I remember not, I call, but I, I truly don't remember it. I, and I think to say even that, it's, it's rare. How about, let me, let me ask if this makes sense, and, and it may require more reading. On that last paragraph, we say, students who are tardy to school unexcused are prohibited can we change that to maybe prohibited? Or are subject to? A subject or could be prohibited? That's an excellent idea. From participating and then. It's still your discretion. It give, you still have the well, discretion. Well, the other way. There's a presumption There's a that presumption. they can participate. Right. But you have the right to not let them participate. Right. And I'm fine with that, but you don't think that gets satisfied by saying except in the case of an extension no. service? No, because. I don't. I do. Why don't you? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> why, why is it you don't? Because I need to define extenuating. There oh, are okay. some cases where there are no extenuating right. circumstances. They're just not. But it, uh, uh, wouldn't I be using that same? No. I would I drop the accepted. Uh, if that's if you're going to put the may in there, then you might as well just drop the accept in the case because that's yeah. the exception to the yeah. exception. Yeah. And that gives you the same discretion. It's the same discretion. You know, uh, the same arbitrary <laughs> subjective discretion as you have now for extenuating circumstances. But the presumption is they can participate. But if there is something that you see about that particular tidiness, and a perfect example, John, would be coming in at 150. <laughs> You're not participating. You know, you've taken advantage of the system. But if you came in at 745, I'm sorry, 750, well, you know, then you're not going to exercise that, that, that prerogative. So is your concern if we say could be or maybe, then that would send a signal that well, 9 o'clock maybe is, but 9 05 isn't now. You know, I think we get into that's why I was so saying. So you, you, you feel that weakens, <laughs> that weakens the policy a little bit? No, thing. I don't think it weakens it. I think it makes it. I think it makes it more difficult to be objective. I think it becomes far more subjective, I think. <coughs> because now, when, that's why maybe if you want to think yeah, about yeah, a percentage of the school day. It makes, no, it's not more subjective. I think it just puts more burden on the administrator. Right. It, it, it makes sure that guy. That's not a good thing to me. I, I guess I. He's the principal. Our, our students are very, and our parents are very good with this. I have to tell you, they really are. I think we've done a good job of working with them, you know, exercising common sense. I think it's a known thing now. The 745, three excused, is, is very much a known uh, rule, if you will. Uh, and believe me, I don't, I don't like being a bad guy. I mean, I, I will be when I have to, but I, I think. I think by personally myself, myself, I think if you say they may be prohibited, it's the same thing in my mind because of how we invoke the extenuating circumstance. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're saying if your circumstance in my mind is extenuating, you may or may not be able to play that day. That's same what we're saying. Thing. I think I think I am only because of how we exercise. It changes the presumption. The right. presumption is you can't participate. Yeah. But, but we're all happy with the situation with John. Uh, see, I, I'm, I'm going to be there for the rest I guess of the year. What I would so like to see. Would be fine. We, I'd like to see other school tardy policies. I'm not saying that you have, but if there is any way we could, I would like to see what other schools do. Well, I'm not saying that this is wrong or right. I'd, I'd just be interested in seeing. Well, we can yeah. charge the subcommittee, the right. policy subcommittee. I, I make a motion to refer this <laughs> to the subcommittee on policy. Second. It's got to be done for tonight. I know. Yeah. yeah. No. We, we can approve this tonight. Over the course, we yes. approve this, we'll but send then it. we can refer it, it and we'll study it for the next committee. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Ooh, and refer it to the school. Yeah, yes. you do that. Um, so I, I know the extenuating circumstances with Route 62 construction. I, I've had my own kids drive to school mm -hmm. and get caught in that awful traffic and come home for a note. We've had, we've had accidents. Like, you could have made it. That things were, you know, you they know, come home. I'm going to be 10 minutes after yeah. the bell. I need Look at the turf field, how that's going to slow down people this year. We've, so we've we had know. accidents where, you know, that, that's been right. a problem. Right. Um, okay, I don't know. Right. We could have issues with the construction. And we usually find that out from the student. The student will come in and say, you know, a student who's early will say, there's an accident. You know, you might want to know there's an right. accident. If they see me out in the parking lot, right. they want. And those lights and that traffic. Yeah, a, there are a lot of things. The weather sometimes yeah. plays a role. So. Okay, so let's see if we can move this. Do you um, have to I explain to the... the um, I, did, I did say it. That we would move to a oh, all right. Yeah, we, we send it without a motion. We'll just send it. Yeah. But he, um, John needs to go to the last two things here. To the dismissals, John. Yep. Dismissals, like dismissals, dismissals, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that's fine. At the bottom of that page, um, I, I'm suggesting that... Um, Students who are dismissed and returned to school 
prior to the conclusion of the school day are not prevented from participating in an athletic practice practice or a contest or other extracurricular activity provided that they have attended at least fifty percent of the school day this condition may be waived by the school administration in the case of an extenuating circumstance every every effort should be made to present an official verification and i gave some examples uh, a medical note or other professional verification um, some sort of document for the need for the dismissal you know, that, that's we get we get a lot of those orthodontist appointment type things yeah. um, that are hard to get. And, yeah. okay. um, was that the only other one you wanted me to go well, through tonight? Transferring, I thought we had some. Did you just change the word? I added the word transferring or. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thoughts of emotionalness with the knowledge that it's going to be set And I've got Siri, I look forward to that. I think, you know, I'm certainly willing to open I think it up we're all on the same page. I, it's a matter of how we express I, it. We're not about being overly punitive and penalizing. I mean, we, 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 we want to try to, I think Mr. Bauer said it well, we're trying to teach good habits. But you know what? Look, it, speeding, <laughs> speeding leads to traffic deaths. Absolutely. <coughs> but it's one of the factors in, in, in accidents and traffic deaths. The penalty for speeding over 64 point Nine, 66 miles an hour. 66 miles an hour is $50. Should we make it 30 days in jail because it will absolutely positively reduce the speeding? You know, I mean, you can always say we're trying to teach good habits and in compliance with the rules and the law. That's fine. I agree with that. But what's the penalty? I mean, that's that's my concern. Well, I think next year we'll have a... Yeah, we need to look at some other schools. You might need to bring Jerry in on that. I just want to, um, I know John's leaving, and I know later we're going to review the uh, SAT scores. I, I just want to say that um, you know, while they're not where the, I would like to be, they are improving it's significantly. I'm looking at the differences between the our, our scores and the state, and I believe since John has gotten here, the difference, uh, the difference between our scores and the state and national scores has improved significantly. Yeah, I, Before I, you got here, we were almost even in many cases with the state and national. And now, in many cases, we're 20, 30 points higher. So I just want to note that and appreciate the effort. I think the classes we put into place, I think I think we're doing the right things. Same thing with the AP tests. Um, I agree. I was yes. very encouraged by that, yeah. too. And, not, and obviously, you can't tell year to year because the right. test is different. But, but it's as, over as five as years. Over five years, and as it relates to the national, I think the state average, it's, right. it's shown a steady improvement. Yeah. So and I'm very pleased by people yeah. working hard. And I think it's. That's it's showing and, and, and I think in a lot of other things too, but they, those standardized tests certainly are. I do have ACT school oh, right, report the ACT. that I just received. These are embargoed yeah. until tomorrow. Oh, okay. But I'm going to leave copies with I, them. I love them. They have. We have, have an additional sheet. It's a better summary sheet, I think. I got. Today. I think we have that too, don't we? I don't no, believe no. so. Oh. And John, you opened up this evening thanking um, a lot of people, your I did. staff, and I did. Um, students and council members that participate in the review of the handbook and. Certainly, we really appreciate that this is not just John Bernard's handbook, but That's rather that right. the staff and the students and the parents do the council. That's correct. And, and just to clarify, I know there was some question about that. Uh, can you just briefly summarize the council's role in the handbook review? I can. We've, um, you know, for the last several years, we've put the student handbook on the parent student handbook on the agenda for our school council meetings. Uh, that was the case this past school year. Um, it will continue to be the case. We went through a substantial revision in the 07 08, with the end of the 07 08 school year, to bring the 08 09 handbook to you last year. The school council spent a great deal of time on reorganizing the handbook, I think making it a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more readable, sections following each other in some sort of a, a better order. Um, and the council played a very, very important role in that and a significant role in that this year. We, we looked at it. There were very few uh, recommendations that came out of the school council, but um, I think it's fair to say that there were some that were, you know, in my judgment, felt to be necessary to be included, and I've reflected that here in the 0910. Um, you know, I think I'd like to commit to doing a, a, maybe a more thorough review from the beginning of the school year and maybe take in chunks so that, you know, maybe in the springtime where we're competing with school improvement plans and such, and, Trying to wrap up the school year, we're not we're not missing anything. So I, 
that's my plan for, for 0910. That'd be great because 